the importance of wisdom. Now the Bible says now Joshua was old and advanced in years. And the Lord said to him, you are old and advanced in years. And there remains very much land yet to be possessed. The main verse here is, there is a lot I want you to do, Joshua. But time is not on your side. You need to work extra hard. Because there is a lot I want to give you, Joshua. But Joshua, you are growing old. You are not being careful of your time here on earth. You are limited. There are things that limit us as human beings. One is time. We are limited by time. Do you know you cannot recover yesterday? It is gone. Eh, praise the Lord. The, yesterday is gone. So we are limited by time. Very limited by time. So God comes and tells Joshua, there is something I can't be able to help you with. If you don't take an action concerning your life, you would grow old and die before you do what I told you to do. That is why we need to take an action concerning our vision, concerning our dreams, concerning uh, the voice of God in our lives. Some of us, we are too slow in pursuing the will of God concerning our lives. There is what God spoke concerning you, but you're not yet there. My prayer is that you may pursue the will of God concerning your life. Do you know some of you are instructed so many things, but you have never done them. Work like you have never worked before. Be love the people you are supposed to love. Share love. Share your life with other people. Because we are limited by what? By death. Death is a limiting factor. So because we don't know when we shall leave this earth, we are supposed to do what we can do with our lives. Praise the Lord. Myers Monroe said that the most wealthiest place is not in the city, is not in the companies, it is in the graveyard. The most wealthiest place. Because these people died with visions. They died with dreams. They died with books they could have written. They died with companies they could have started. They died with uh, churches. Whatever age you are at, remember you are growing old. What you are supposed to do, do. If you are supposed to take your, your children out and spend time with them, do it now. Praise the Lord. If you are supposed to take an action of uh, building a hospital, there are people here who, who have a vision to build a hospital. You can start. Oh, pastor, where do I start? Because some of us, the starting point is the problem. Where do I begin? I have this dream, but I don't know what to do. And that is why you need mentorship. One of the greatest ways to grow is through a mentor. Mentorship helps you to know how to maneuver and what to do. Praise the Lord. Oh, pastor, I've been having a mentor, but still nothing is moving. You can do... Now, what I'm trying to say is that the entrance of what you're doing right now may not look very good, but it is an opportunity to enter the gold mines where you are supposed to get your resources. Hey. Esther was just a young girl. No, she was not even a politician. But the advice she got from Mordecai, that small opportunity, go bathe. Go clean yourself. You may become a queen. Do you know, within a short time, she be, from being an orphan, she was a, king, a queen. So what if she did not go for that beauty pageant? You know, definitely. Siwalipangwa. Let's say like 30, right? And then the king was, you know now the king, the wife, but Vashiti has, had been chased away. So the young girls, including Esther, was there. Aya, can you walk? And then everyone would walk. Don't you think there were girls who said, I'm not going to that pageant. I will not go. Do I have to be married by the king? I can live my life. Even one day that king will die and I will die. Do you know there are people who encourage themselves with death? So wh wh why should I have all those things and you still die? What kind of a thinking? But Esther decided to go. Because if she did not go, she could not have become the queen. A little opportunity of sh showcasing herself. You know, putting her hair nice and all that. Then eventually she was chosen to become the king's wife. And her becoming the queen, she delivered the nation of Israel. 
But it started at a small level of opportunity. Just an opportunity of showcasing your beauty. It's also a talent. The, the little, little opportunities that we are being given around us, we should utilize them. The little, little opportunities that we are being given around us, we should utilize them. My prayer for every one of us here is that whatever door that opens for you, don't despise it. I repeat again, whatever small door that opens for you, don't despise it. You know, sometimes I'm invited to preach in high schools. And the person calling me asks me, can you, can you come? You know, you're a bishop. Would you come to a high school? And I'm like, why should I not come? That is a door of opportunity. I, had a, I went to preach in Flamingo High School. I went on Friday. Was it on Friday? I went to preach in Langalanga. Because some of those students will become members in the future. I may not see that now. But in 10 years, somebody may join this church and he's a doctor. You know, Bishop, you came to preach to me when I was in Langalanga High School. And I decided I would follow you wherever you'll go. And they become a kingdom financier. They become singers in the church. They become music, music instrumentists. They become board members. So what I'm saying is that please stop despising the small moments, the small victories. Hey, hallelujah. The small opportunities that are handed to you. Those opportunities are your springboard to where you are going. Don't just live in this, what do you call it? A world of fantasy. Mshaika peke yako hivi unaanza kufikiria wewe ndio ndio president. Na unaanza kuimagine. Ama ni mimi peke yangu nishaikuwa na hizo imagination. What if I was president? Ninaanza kufikiria vile ningefanya. Ninaanza kufikiria vile ningejenga barabara mbili mbili juu kwa juu ma vitu ambazo waziezi fanyika. Yaani unakuanga na hizo ma fantasies that one day you'll become this big person surrounded with a, with a, thousands of workers you will employ thousands now before those thousands can you begin with one can you appreciate what you are doing with this one little person that god has brought your way are you mistreating them how are you living with them my prayer for you from joshua 13 again one the bible says you are growing old look at the book of ecclesiastes chapter 2 verses 14 Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verses 14. I think I felt that what I was telling you was important. You know that issue of please celebrate the little moments. Please celebrate that time you have with your children. Praise the Lord. Please celebrate your mother. Yeah? Celebrate your mother. Right now, this is the time to celebrate your parents. Oh, you know, one day I'll build my mom, I'll build my dad, I'll do... What are you doing now? What are you doing now? Ask your neighbor, what are you doing now concerning your parent? Oh, one day I will, one day, one day, one day. What are you doing? Do you know sometimes I, I drive and I go to my dad's place. We spend evening together. We eat together. I go and I sit with him. And around nine I leave. Because when will I ever spend time with him? If not now. So sometimes I leave the town around 7 and I'm like, let me just go visit my mom. And I drive to Nairobi. Nobody will know. And in the morning I come back. I go just spend time with her for two hours. We talk, 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 sleep. Then I wake up, I come back. Sometimes I leave the town, I go sit with my dad and I'm like, are you okay? How are you doing? We talk, 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 talk. I see him sleeping as we are talking. But that is the moment. Don't think there will be another day you'll have a time with your parents. Somebody said something true. If you see somebody crying a lot in a funeral because of their father or mother who died, it is because they did not spend enough time with them. So they have a lot of regrets. So they cry, they somersault, they eat the soil, they jump into the... <laughs> what do you call that? The pit. Ni pita maina ito wadid. Eh? Eh? Oh, the grave. They jump in there, we remove them. Do you know what they are doing? They are regretting the many times they did not have time with their parents. 
You know if you stay with your parents sana sana unamwangalia unam Do you know at that funeral you don't cry a lot. You just remember the happy moments. Ask your neighbor what are you doing now? Now, not tomorrow now. For your parents, what are you doing? You take a whole year to visit your parents. When they die, hey, you lay on the ground. This is the time to honor your father. I'm talking to young men here. Honor your father now. Buy him the suit you are supposed to buy him now. Oh, one day I'll build him a house, buy him a shoe now. One day I will know that one before it comes. Can you do something little right now what you are able to do? Do something to your wife now. Not oh one day I know my wife. I'll take you to Barbados. My wife, I'll take you to Seychelles. Why can't you take her to Naivasha? Now. Okay, so Ecclesiastes 2:14. Can we read together one to go? The wise man's eyes are in his head. But the fool walks in darkness. Yet I myself perceive that the same event has happened to them all. If you are wise, the Bible says it shows by the way you think. The wise man's eyes are where? In his eyes, are in his head. The wise man's eyes are in his head. So for you to to possess the land, you remember we are going back to Joshua. You are getting old. There is a day one of the bishops in 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 Africa, he has a very big church. And uh he built a very big church that could, could accommodate thousands and thousands. And in the middle of that church, near, near where the, the altar is, he built a room. So people came to ask him, is that a prayer room? He said, no, it's a thinking room. So he said, besides prayer, he thinks. He's the one who taught me something that I normally do. Sometimes I sit down to think on how we can progress as a church. Not to pray. Sometimes I go to church the whole night. Not to pray. To think. What are we supposed to do? How are we supposed to run our programs? And I start writing those points. I start, and then I start implementing them. The wise man's eyes are in his head. How many of us, you have a thinking time? Some of us, we have praying time. But we don't have thinking time. Because wisdom is in your thinking. If you want to go far, you need to develop thinking time. Sit down and think. Sit down and think. That is why in the book of Isaiah 38, God comes and tells Ezekiah, set your house in order. He did not have time to think concerning his family. He never thought, where are they heading? What if I die today, Hezekiah? Where will my children be? How will my family be? That is why God is coming and to tell Hezekiah, listen, your house is not in order. Can, I, can you give me Isaiah 68? Your house is not in order. Set it in order. Hezekiah, you are a good king, but there is a lot of chaos in your family. You have not told your son what to do. You have not divided your properties. You have not done an inheritance. You have not done, you know, you have not prepared your family. This church should be in order. The structure should be so well put. That if Bishop Ben was old, what will happen? Si kukufa unakufa na ministry muzima. Inafungwa. You know? Because you did not set your house in. I'm talking to young ladies here. Set your house in. I'm talking to young men. Sit down, down and think. Especially the ones that are doing wedding. You should sit down and think. Ask yourself. How, how, like, how, how will my wedding be? What will happen in the wedding day? What will I not want to see and what will I not would, would I would I want to see in that wedding? But you don't allow that, oh, you know that day I know it will be good. You have to plan for it. Praise the Lord. Things don't just fall from the sky. Things are planned by men. If you don't plan, do you know, let me finish by saying this. So in those days, Ezekiah was sick near death and Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, went to him and said to him, Thus says the Lord, set your house in order, for you shall die and not live. 
Now, setting your house in order. That is thinking on your future. Do you know some of you here, you should be thinking on, based on blocks of five years. Blocks of five years. I have come to learn, Madam Grace, if, if you put your life in blocks of five years, you have a tendency of trying to achieve what you wrote down. In five years, I want to do one, two, three, four. You will have energy to push towards that. In five years, I want to buy land and build. Don't, don't, don't look at the money you earn because that's the problem we have. Oh, I, the money I, I earn, I cannot do anything. No, plan it. You start having energy, looking for that land where you can build for your family. Praise the Lord. The wise man's eyes are in his head. Do you take time to think concerning your life? Do you take time to think, who is it that is pulling me behind? What kind of a relationship that is affecting me or affecting my health? Do you sit down to think, you know, who am I supposed to disconnect from? Who is it? Because some of us, we build our life through comp competition. Stop competing with people. Sit down and think. Because you should grow in business. One day I sat with a man who was, you know, shaving my hair and I asked him, why can't you open your own barber shop with time? He told me, he started calculating, you know, when you have a barber shop, you have to, to you know, you employ people, they are troubling you, you know, electricity is too much, you are paying rent. But here, I just carry my machine. And then I do my kinyozi, I get my 1,000, I have no trouble, I'm not troubling anyone, I'm, I, I have no stress, I'm all okay. Do you see the, the kind of thinking? I told him, you don't think like that. Oh, no, no, no. You see these people who own kinosis, they have, they have diabetes. They have pressure. You see the kind of... Hallelujah. Am I challenging somebody here? My, my, my prayer for you, for those who are vehicles, you're in, in the transport industry. Why can't you sit down and think, how can I go to my next level? Hey, the wise man's eyes are where? They are not in his legs. They are where? But the Bible says, a foolish man walks in what? Darkness. Lift up your hands, I will not walk in darkness. Say again, I will not walk in darkness. There are two kinds of mentalities. The mentality of being told and the mentality of building opportunities and building, coming up with programs that not only will favor the child, they will also favor you. So, let's go beyond being told. Let's start thinking. Oh, let the eyes of your head start see, seeing things. May you see things that, can you declare now in the name of Jesus? Let my, the, my eyes be in my head. Say in the name of Jesus, I will not walk in darkness. I will think. I will think. I will have time to think. In the name of Jesus. I know I'm growing old. There is a lot of land to be possessed. So help me God. So help me God. In Jesus name we pray. And we are done. Hey, amen. Can you buy a thinking book? Have a thinking book. Some of you, you have a dream book. You write your dreams. Niliota umboi kinikimbiza. Niliota. Nini ingine uliota leo usiku? I want you to have a thinking book. Hey, listen. There is a bishop again who taught me something. You see these thoughts that come... You, the ideas they come as maybe sometimes you are in the matatu or maybe you are walking he, he said that anytime an idea comes even if he's driving he stops his car and writes it down and the reason why he has grown so big he has a very big ministry is because he implements those ideas because the holy spirit will speak to you through ideas he will drop ideas into your head if you take an action immediately you implement that idea, it was God's design for your life.
But most of us, ideas come, then we forget them. I want you to start writing ideas. Any ideas that drops. Si kama ushaenda mahali ukaona idea ulikuwa nayo, maana huku ifanyia kazi, unaona mtu mwingine ame implement. Unasema na hata ile kitu ni mimi nilikuwa nataka kuanza. Unajua shida ilikuwa nini? Mungu alipo drop kwa wako akaona ufanye, akaipeleka kwa wengine watafanya. May you develop ideas. Yeah? Do you know the idea of a of a media station dropped into my mind? What if we had a media? I may not have a lot of money, but today do we have a media? Yes. This more small ideas. I don't want to mention some of the ideas so that you don't steal them. But I have a number of ideas that I am going to implement. Very good ones. Very good ones. I want you to act on your small ideas. Small ideas. Buy a book called a book of ideas. A book of thinking. Sasa kama wewe pengine uko na shule kama tatu ndani yako. Na unajua unaanza kuzeeka. Eh? Ukiona ndevu zinaanza kuwa mingi ni kumaanisha mwili inakuambia nazeeka. Mimi nawaombea nyote. I pray for all of you. The small small ideas you have it is the Holy Spirit speaking to you. You are waiting for a big voice. Jen 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 it is God speaking to you. God drops ideas to you girls. Small small ideas. But you never take action. Can you try and move without an idea? Eh, amen. I want us to pray now. We are done. I want us to give our offerings. Those who are watching, God bless you. Thank you for following us. There is a pay bill number they are giving you on the screen. 247247 account 288157. You can give your offering through that pay bill number. Father, in the name of Jesus, I bless each and every person who was following. I sanctify their offering in the name of Jesus. And I declare, may the Lord bless them. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Maybe you are there, you want to give your life to Jesus. I want you to repeat this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, forgive me of every mistake and every sin, iniquity or transgression in my life. I give you my life, write my name in the book of life. And from today, fill me with your Holy Spirit. And I'm born again in Jesus' name. Amen. Maybe you are sick, you're not well. I declare if you're in a hospital bed, may you recover in Jesus' name. Maybe you're at home, I pray for your health and for your recovery in the mighty name of Jesus. And if you don't go to church, make sure you locate a good church. And we invite you today, our church is at Kenyatta Avenue next to Equity Bank Nakuru. And also our, uh, we have another church in Barnabas, our headquarters, that is opposite Ruby's Petrol Station. On your way to His Kids Academy, you are welcome to worship with us this Sunday. God bless you as you give your offerings in Jesus' name. God bless you.